Hi, Anne from Imagine If here. Thanks for joining me for another At Home with Imagine If story time. I have three books for you today, and all of them are going to ask you to use your imagination. Other things too, like your ears and your eyes, but also your imagination and your mind. And I'll show you what I mean in this first book, Not a Box by Antoinette Portis, who is both the author and the illustrator. In this book, she uses just two colors to draw her pictures. Just two. Yet this book won multiple awards for the pictures. I'll show you how cleverly she uses her two colors, along with the colors of the pages, to show you how a grown-up sees things compared to the child. Well, in this book, the child is a little bunny. But you'll see what I mean. The kid see, the adult sees everything in black and white, and the kid adds imagination in red. So let me turn the camera around, and we'll read this first book. Not a Box by Antoinette Portis. <laughs> Says this side up like it's a box. Cardboard brown cover. The little bunny in his box. And papers are also cardboard brown. So is this a box or a book? We know it's not a box. That's what it says right there. Not a box. So the bunny sees the box for the first time. And this is before the book has even started. We're starting to get a little picture of what's happening. Taking the box with them. Pushing the box along. It says, dedicated to children everywhere sitting in cardboard boxes. Why are you sitting in that box? That's what the grown-up sees. You know, see, look at his hand out there, little bunny ears. That stays the same right there. All the black part is the same. And the red is the imagination. It's not a box, says the kid. Obviously, it's a car. What are you doing on top of that box? It's not a box. It says Rabbit Peak. Tall, so tall, big mountain. Why are you squirting a box? I said, it's not a box. A burning building. Oh, now you're wearing a box. This is not a box. It's a rabbit. A rabbit robot. Are you still standing around in that box? See the hand up like that? What do you think it's going to be? It's all kinds of things. It's not, not, not a box. It's a crow's nest on a pirate ship, or a hot air balloon, or riding on the back of an elephant. Or riding in a boat? Well, what is it then? No question. Hmm. Thinking, thinking, thinking. How do you describe something like this? It is my not a box. This side up. That's true. The end. 
That book always makes me want to save boxes for us to use at the library. I love seeing what kids come up with given a big cardboard box. If you like Not a Box, this author has a similar book called Not a Stick, among other books. My next book is about a little girl who wants to create things. It all starts as she's drawing a picture and she thinks, what if I lost my pencil? How would I continue to create? This happened in real life to the author, Samantha Berger, when her home flooded and she had to take her dog and leave her home and her art supplies behind. Samantha met the illustrator, Mark, Mike Curato, around that same time, and he found a really neat way to honor Samantha's story by using many different types of mediums in his pictures. He didn't just use a pencil because what if he lost his pencil? So I'll turn the camera around and as I read, look at the pictures in this book and see how many ways the illustrator found to help tell Samantha's story. What If, written by Samantha Berger, illustrated by Mike Curato. Looks like we've got uh, an apartment building. Let's see what the back side looks like. Oh, the apartment building at night, and something special happened in there. What if? There's Samantha Berger and Mike Curato. So before the book even starts, we've got our main character there drawing a picture with a pencil. What if? Done by crayon, it looks like. With a pencil and paper, I write and draw art to create many stories that come from my heart. But what if that pencil one day disappeared? Well, I'd fold up the paper till stories appeared. And what if that paper was no longer there? Well, I'd chisel the table and then carve the chair. And what if there wasn't a chair here at all? I'd chip and I'd peel at the paint on the wall. And what if there wasn't a wall anymore? I might build a story from the boards in the floor. And without any floor, I could still use the land to sketch out a tail in the dirt with my hand. I could still shape the leaves. I could still sculpt the snow. I could still plant the flowers and make kingdoms grow. And without any land, I would still use the light and vent shadow stories that the sun would ignite. If there was no light, I would still use my voice to sing out my stories, to chant and rejoice. I'd still have my body to twist and to bend, to dance out my stories beginning to end. Oh, if I had nothing but still had my mind. Ooh, this is a big one. There'd always be stories to seek and to find. 
Look at how big her imagination is. If I know nothing but one bit of fate, as long as I live, I will always create. And look at her room. And in it is a lot of the things, like there's the little castle. There's the planets, the rocket ship, the stars. Oh, there's some music. So let's play guitar. And look, there's some of her magic going out the window. As long as I live. Okay, so we've got hers drawings. There's a guy playing music. There's somebody baking a cake. As long as I live, I will always create. And if I zoom in, you see her writing, coloring, drawing, the music, the cake. Downstairs, we got somebody working on a computer. And over there, like they're building something. There, they're working on some math. See that okay? Knitting. Dancing. Ooh, painting. Singing. And then you see what she drew a picture. As long as I live, I will always create. And that shows some of the things they made the, the illustrator made the pictures out of. The end. Nothing can take away our imagination. I like the way the author thought of all the ways she could continue to be creative. It made me think of a fun way to draw that I'm going to show you later. But first I wanted to read this strange wordless book by Christian Robinson. Christian is both the author and the illustrator, and he grew up living with four other kids and two other adults in a tiny one-bedroom apartment. And he began drawing as a way to make more room for himself inside his imagination. And as an adult, he studied art and worked for Sesame Street and Pixar Animation Studios before becoming an award-winning children's book illustrator. So, okay, how do I read a book with no words? Well, at the library, I will turn the pages and kids will often see things that I don't and help tell the story they see. Since I can't hear you, I will try to use my imagination to figure out the message the author is trying to tell us. And if you look at the pictures too, see what you think. Another by Christian Robinson. There's our characters. Oh, but look at that. There's a cat with the blue collar. Cat with a red collar. And papers. What if you encountered another perspective, discovered another world, met another you? What might you do? And papers there. Looks like a starry night sky. Starry night sky. Okay. Another. A red mouse, cat with a red collar, 
sleeping, sleeping, girl with colored bubbles in her hair. The portal opened up. Looks like there's some light shining out. Doesn't look too happy, really, the cat. Girl looks happy. Another cat. The blue collar this time. Oh. Definitely doesn't look happy. Because his mouse is getting taken. Oh, and she's starting to wake up. Cats are going to chase each other. She's up now. She has to see where the cat went. Huh. Down seems to be up in this world. And there goes her cat. She's got to get up there somehow. To follow her cat. So she climbed up her blanket. And there she goes out the door. Oof. Let's see. There's the two cats, one with the red collar, one with the blue collar, and the blue collar has the red mouse. Dun 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 dun. Heading towards that portal. Woo! Through the ball pit room. Into a conveyor belt room. And with the blue collar with the red mouse. That's her cat. Oh, there's a lot going on in here. So she pops out over there. And there's the cat. But in this room are a lot of kids who look similar, but are dressed differently. So, like here we've got this girl drawing. She's got a black shirt and white pants. And up here we've got a girl drawing with the same hair, but she's got a white shirt and black pants. Here's blonde hair hula hoop stripey pajamas. Blonde hair hula hoop stripey pajamas, but they're different colored pajamas. So see what other opposites but similar you can see. Pigtails teddy bear. Pigtails teddy bear. Cowboy hat white. Cowboy hat blue. Well, I bet we're heading to that portal there. Wow. So there's our hero. There's our hero's cat. Check out this. The other half of that girl's up there. This is a strange, strange world. And we've got Curly hair, redheads there. And curly hair, redheads with casts there. Let's see what's, oh, let's see where this guy's going. There's the opposite on this side of the page. Oh, and that girl, was she on the other page? I think she was. Her opposite is over here. And bubble blowing. And there's our hero. Our hero's cat. Let's see where they're going to go next. Oh! Our heroes are going to meet their opposite heroes. The cat sees them. 
red hit red colored cat sees she looks a little upset still they see each other hi hi looks like they get similar colored hair bobbles but in different order like, hey, that's my mouse. Oh yeah, that's my mouse. Now that one doesn't look very happy. And this one's smiling. Yay, my mouse, my mouse. Thank you. Bye. Bye. These guys are going back. Red mouse is in the cat's mouth. Ah, oh, they're back in bed. He's got his mouse with him. Cat looks very happy. The portal's closed. And she rolls over and look what's under the bed. That red collared cat. Oh, no wonder he's so happy. Smiling. What if you met another? That's what they did. The end. <laughs> <laughs> what did you think of that different world the cats were leading them into? Thinking up the idea of that book must have taken a lot of imagination, and drawing it took a lot of creativity by the author. I enjoyed visiting that world in his book. I wanted to leave you with a couple of ideas to do to stretch your imagination. Of course, one thing would be to, be, to get a box to play in. It could be a little or big. I'm going to attach an article that Tony shared with me about fort building in case you have a really big box. And if you want to do this next thing, you're going to need a piece of paper something to lean on, I've got like a sketchbook, and then some dandelions. You could go outside if you wanted to, I'm going to. The book, What If, made me think about how I could continue to draw without a pencil. And I heard that dandelions would work, and they do. I'm gonna show you. Okay, so I'm outside, and you can see I have lots of dandelions around to draw with. So, let's pick some. Do we can come up there. Ooh, nice yellow. Maybe I'll make a lion. Uh, it's kind of like a cat. I wonder if I can get some green. Mm -hmm. Oh, nice. Well, thanks for joining me and imagine if. Till next time.